wife, his wife preaches along with them a little bit every now and then. But we want them just to, to be at home. Um, I asked him how this felt compared to his childhood days here, now that he's, he's a man and um, called to preach and all that. Um, I just picked on him a bit, but um, I remember those days, making me feel old now, Brother Daniel, but we're delighted to have you here. Want to hear from the Word of the Lord? Make yourself at home. God bless you. Well, it's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. It's always wonderful to be with the family of God. Amen. I'm so thankful to be in one of my many home churches. <laughs> it's uh, brought back a lot of memories and uh, reminded me of some things that I tried to avoid a long time ago. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful to be here in the house of the Lord. Can we just worship the Lord just for one more moment? His presence is here. God, we worship you, Lord. You are worthy. You are mighty. You are wonderful, God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for all that you do, God, for you are worthy. You are worthy of all the praise and glory and honor. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. I was a little surprised to get asked to, to preach at Finley. I was uh, not expecting that. I didn't know that many people knew that I was uh, working to be a preacher. <laughs> but it is a privilege and an honor, and I thank you, Pastor Ellingsworth, for this opportunity to be able to bring forth the word that God has laid upon my heart. And uh, I thank my wife for all of her support and everything that she's done for me. She's seen me at my worst. She's seen me at my best and uh, everything in between. So uh, I just I thank her for being amazing. And I thank God for blessing me with an amazing wife. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up with uh, Mark 16. We're going to be reading uh, 14 through 20. I'll ask all those that can stand, please stand. It says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven that sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Simply titled tonight, the power of God. The power of God. You may be seated. We often are told about the power of God. We see the power of God. Or we say that we know the power of God. But do you believe, truly believe, deep down in the power of God? The very same God-given power that was given to the apostles is given unto us by the Spirit of God. We have power, but we have to believe in that power. There are a lot of things that can hold us back from truly realizing the power of God that is in our grasp. These chains that bind us, that hold us, fear, doubt, shame, things in your past that you're ashamed of, things that you've done that you feel guilty of, and they may grip you and hold you tight. It's easy to let these things weigh you down to a point where you can't move. This is something that the enemy wants to use to grip you from truly understanding the power that is within your grasp. This is something that the enemy doesn't want you to realize because he is truly afraid of what you can do with the power of God. God wants you to be free of the doubt. In Jesus, we, are, we have liberty, liberty from sin, from shame, from fear, guilt, whatever it is that holds you, you have a chance to be free from it. Whatever that shame is, maybe it's something you did a long time ago. I can guarantee you 
There's somebody out there who's done something far worse in our eyes and is still saved by God. There may be something that you feel guilty about, something that you said, I can't be forgiven of this. You're wrong. Whatever you're afraid of, something that truly grips you and terrifies you, something that holds you hostage. Maybe it's, God won't do this for me. Maybe God won't, won't see this. I've, I've done so much that's been bad, God. How can you heal me? How can you touch this situation? How can you use me? I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm shattered. I'm hurt. I'm wounded. God wants to pick up those pieces and put it back together. Bring it back to a wholeness and say, you're not worthless. But, but you don't see what I see. You don't see the wholeness that I see. You don't see the lives that you will touch because you're afraid, because you're shamed. 2 Timothy 1 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to get a little hung up on the power part right here. Power. There's power. In ancient Greek, it's, it's uh, dynama. Reminds me of the word dynamite. Power, explosive, things that can change the earth. They can move mountains. Whatever it is, power is there. God loves you no matter what's going on, so stop focusing on the things of the past. Stop focusing on the things that you've done wrong. God wants to start something new from right now at this point. Don't allow other things to grab your attention and pull your focus from God. Reminds me of Peter when he's walking out of the boat. He sees Jesus and he's walking on water. And then all of a sudden, his focus shifts. He loses sight of God. He loses sight of, of Jesus. And he says, Lord, help me. And Jesus reaches down and pulls him up out of the water. And he says, Oh, ye of little faith, where did, you, where did you stop believing in me? Why did you stop believing in me? Did you not see what you were doing? But he saw the wind, and he saw the waves, and he saw everything that encompassed him, everything that held him. We get so caught up in what's going on in our own lives that we lose sight of what Jesus is truly trying to do with us. It says in, in Matthew 17 and 20, it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because... Of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto a mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing shall be impossible to you. I'm going to get hung up on that a little bit. Nothing is impossible to you. If you have just the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, the tiniest seed, and it can work its way into the mountain and grow into the biggest tree of its size. It, it dri drives down deep and holds. It can grow in some of the most difficult places. Faith is vital and an important key to the movement and power of God. If you do not believe, it will not happen. You've already defeated yourself halfway if you don't believe. If you're, you're halfway through a race and you say, well, nope, I just can't do it. I'm just going to go ahead and go sit down. Well, you're never going to finish the race. You're never going to complete what God has in store for you. So first, you have to start with the belief that he can do it. Trust in him and completely give it to him to take care of. Brought me to the story of the man who brings his son to, to the disciples. And the disciples can't cast out the demon. And then Jesus comes down and he says, Why? Why? I'm paraphrasing, of course, here. But he says, Why? He asks the man and he says, If you believe, it can be done. And he says, and straight away the father said, uh, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Help thou mine unbelief. Lord, I understand that you can do this. I know that you can do this. I understand deep down. But, but there's just something in the back of your mind clawing and saying, no, 
No, he can't do it. He can't do it. Oh, you've done so much bad. You've done so much wrong. But Jesus says, no, look, look, look. I, I laid my life down for you. I gave myself up for you. I want you to be with me forever. I have given you power, but you don't believe. The man, the man that asked Jesus to heal his son says, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Sometimes we may have to ask that. We say, Lord, help thou mine unbelief right now. Lord, I know you can. I believe that you can. But there's something gnawing at me right now, God, that the enemy's telling me you can't. The enemy's telling me you won't do it. But you can. I know you can. Then a breakthrough happens. A breakthrough happens. And the demons cast out. They said the demon was cast away and he was in his right mind. He was fine. He was perfect. That breakthrough moment is when you realize something great is happening. Great things are coming. And know that the, the enemy is not ready to give up that territory right now. They don't want you to have this realization. The devil will come at you as hard as he can to keep you from this revelation. He will attempt to destroy everything that you can do. He's going to do everything in his power to keep you from realizing this point. Have you ever heard that old adage of, I've taken one step forward, but I'm always taking two steps back. Well, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to keep you in that mindset. He wants to keep you from truly understanding that you're making progress. Because if he gives up that territory, there's nothing that's going to be able to stop you. The devil and his minions are territorial. They, they want, you to, want you to stay grounded where you are. They want to keep you, you contained. They want to keep you in this, in this tight little bubble. Because if you ever break free from that, you're going to have earth-shattering power. You're going to have truly world-changing understanding. You're going to have something that is greater than you've ever begun to imagine. But if you hold back, then what's going to happen? God is still God no matter what is going on. God is the God of impossibilities. He's the God of the hills and the valleys. It reminds me of the story of the Syrians. It says, And there, there came a man of God and he spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said that the Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. When the enemy believes that they have you surrounded, when the enemy believes that they've got you beaten, they're in for a rude awakening. Because that's the point where God's right next to you. He's in the deepest valleys, the grimiest of the valleys. That's where you're going to do a lot of your fighting. You're going to do a lot of your, a lot of your, your tearing in there. But that's where you're going to make the most growth. That's where you're going to truly, truly get something deep. But sometimes we don't want to be in that, in, that, in that muck, in that mire where we're having to dig through it and we're having to work for something, truly, truly work for something. But that's where it happens. It doesn't matter if you're on the highest mountaintop or if you're in the deepest valley. God is with you. And I'm here to tell you tonight that the power of God that has been bestowed on each and every one of us through the Holy Ghost is with you. And that there's nothing that can overcome you because God is still God. He is a miracle working God. And there is nothing that can hinder him except for us. So don't be the hindrance, but instead truly reach into your situation and say, God, use me however you see fit. It's, it's, it's not about me, Lord. No, no, no. It's all about you. I want you to move in these lives. I want them to see what I see. I want them to understand what I understand, that you are God, that you love us, that you gave us something truly great, that it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I have peace and I have love and I have joy because you, God, you, God, are the center of my life. You are my necessity, God. You are my all in all. There's nothing to be afraid of. 
There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be guilty of because that's all washed under the blood and the power of God has taken care of it because God loves you. God loves you. Can I get an amen right now? God loves you. And it doesn't matter what's going on because God is still God. I'm so thankful that God is still God. Because how many times would I have been left somewhere if God wasn't the God that he is, the merciful God that he is? I'm so thankful that God is doing such mighty things. I'm so thankful that God has, has been beside me through it all. Even when I thought I wasn't worthy, he saw some worth in my life. He saw something truly great. Even when I said, no, I can't do it. Even when I was dragging my feet and I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. He says, just trust in me. Trust in me. God is the God of your circumstances. God is whatever you need him to be in the midst of your hardest and most difficult fight. He's in your corner saying, come on, get up. You can do it. I'm right here with you. He's giving you, you know, a little squirt bottle, giving you some water, refreshing you. He renews you daily. He renews you every time. And it doesn't matter what's going on. No matter the circumstance, no matter if you're in the deepest, darkest pit, if you're in the deepest, darkest storm, the most tumultuous time, God is still there with you. The God of the universe, the God that created the universe, the God that spoke everything into existence wants to dwell inside of you. If that doesn't make you feel like you're worth something, I don't know what will. But my God is the biggest thing there is, and he wants to live in each and every one of us. That, that makes me feel a little good. That makes me feel a little excited that God, whoo, God is with me. That God saw me and said, hey, ha. I love you and I care about you. I want to live in you. I want to live inside of you. I want to be in your life. I want to be the most important thing in your life. Don't underestimate God. Don't underestimate what he can do. He will flip things over. He will confound everybody. He will make the weak look strong and he will make the foolish wise. He'll make the wise foolish. He, he's, he's not this, the, this, this God who's going to use the, the most capable or the most qualified. But instead, he, he likes to take things and say, all right, you guys said he's not worth something. Let me show you something. Let me show you how I do things. Let me show you how I roll. Let me show you this. Let me, let me, let me truly blow your mind. The devil doesn't want you to understand this, though. You may second-guess yourself. Want to, you may have all this confusion about you. But that's a tactic in war. They want to they disturb the communication lines. They want to send false information. They want to they confuse things. Because if, if that confusion stays there, you're never really going to understand what's really going on. But God is the God of clarity and love, peace. He can turn over your problems and you can watch miracles happen. Faith and complete trust in the Lord. You won't know what to do with yourself. And with the trust in the Lord and the power of God on your side, all things are possible. I'll be closing with this. If musicians want to go ahead and come up, they can. Stop worrying about the wrong things. Stop focusing on the things that you do not deserve, that do not deserve your attention or your focus. But instead, focus on the Lord. Psalm 62 and 11 says, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this. The power belongeth unto God. When you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, remember that you have the amazing power of God on your side. When you feel the shame, guilt, and fear, remember that the eternal and everlasting God saw fit to lay his life down for you. You think you are not worthy, but just remember that God who created everything and that can, can do anything and it can not be contained by anything wants to live in you, inside of you. Think on the things of virtue Think on the good things. 
God wants you to remember the good things. Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. God is unchanging, and the power of God is astounding. Do not be afraid of something that won't happen. You can get tied up in the what ifs as often as you want to, but that's just going to keep you where you are. Don't get tied up in those what ifs, but instead believe in the I am. Believe in the I am because he's not about what ifs. He's about I'm going to do this. He's not about the what ifs, but, but this is what's going to happen. He is the God of, of certainty. Be unashamed, be fearless, stand tall and stand proud. For you are a child of the king. A child of the king. We are royalty. Think about that for a minute. It doesn't matter where you are. You're royalty. I'm a child of a king. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm so thankful that I'm a child of the king. I'm so thankful that I'm a child of the all-powerful God. That no matter what's going on in my life, I can trust in Him. That I can give every situation to Him. That my God is always going to be God. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. It doesn't matter how far you've been shamed. It doesn't matter what you've done. But right now, at this moment, we can do something better. God wants to do something better. I'll ask all those that can stand. God is so good and still a miracle working God. There's nothing that he cannot do. Trust in the Lord always. And again I say trust in the Lord always. God is so good. God is so wonderful. Give it over to the to the musicians. Jesus. Folks, you've heard from the Lord tonight. If you've got a need, God has what you need. He's got all power. There's nothing too hard, nothing impossible. You've been encouraged. Now it's up to you. You've got to respond. The only thing God can't do is move in the life of one who doesn't open their heart in faith. Open your heart as we sing. Come to the front. Receive from the Lord what you need. Let's join together. Praise the one who has all power. In Jesus' name. Impossible through you, blind eyes. 